Well, thanks to Google and Yahoo and Apple and Microsoft and many other cloud email providers of the world, DMARC is now a thing. I've heard a lot of questions about, ah, how do we become DMARC compliant? And some people are saying, oh, you just throw this record in DNS and that solves it. Does it? Not exactly. Let me explain what DMARC is all about. So DMARC is there to solve a problem. So let's start off with what that is. It all orbits around the simplicity of email, right? When you have an email server, so let's just say I have this domain, right, viato.com, and I have this email address, jeremy at viato.com, that email server is going to be able to send email to the rest of the world. The challenge is, how does the rest of the world know that that email is genuine, right? So down here we have other email servers of the world. We'll just say Gmail. I don't know, this is Kohl's, right? Just because I bought a shirt from there recently. So you know, all of the thousands and millions of email servers of the world, they're gonna get emails from me and from my domain. And they're asking the question as it comes in, one, is this genuine? Is this some kind of phishing email, right? Um, and two, is it spam? They, they have, you know, not only is it phishing, is it a fraudulent email, but is this just junk so that we can file it correctly, right? DMARC orbits around both of those because in, so here's, here's a, in essence, the problem that it solves. It's not hard for somebody to come up with a rogue email server, uh, we'll call these guys the fishers, right? And impersonate my domain and impersonate my email address. I mean, you don't, you don't need me to tell you this. You've been hearing it for probably well over a decade. Be sure you verify where that email came from, right? And that's, that's the problem that DMARC solves is when before DMARC is deployed, people can create a fake viato.com domain, send fake jeremy at viato.com emails and it comes in and now people are going, who is this from? How can I tell that this is genuine? So, DMARC solves that, sort of. It actually solves both challenges. One, to make sure that fraudulent emails uh, are kept at bay, but two, to increase the reputation of those that are sending genuine emails. Now, the big challenge that we have is not this. I mean, this is actually one of the simplest email setups you can have. I've got an email server, right? It's sending email to other email servers and receiving email from them. That's how it works. Well, as viato.com grows, we're gonna have other sources send as us as well, right? We're gonna send up, you know, sign up for, uh, I'll make them purple, uh, sign up for uh, things like Constant Contact and MailChimp and all the other thousands of services out there that can send newsletters and marketing emails and keep our customers up to date. Uh, or if, if you're in my world, which is the influencer world, everybody tells you create a funnel, right? Create a, create a, a, a catch that people can see a video and then sign up for a thing. And you know what's gonna happen when you sign up for that free thing, right? You're gonna be added to this list and you're gonna get like 15 other emails. That's all a system that is not sending from viato.com, right? It's not sending from my Gmail or Microsoft 365 email account that's hosted up here or my own email server. It's being sent by some service that is impersonating me. But I want them to, right? Because I'm signed up for that service. That's what makes this so hard. And again, I'm coming back to that's what DMARC solves. How does it do it? Three things. All right, the three things that make DMARC tick are actually SPF, DKIM, and a flag that I would call DMARC equals reject. Let me explain. SPF stands for the Sender Policy Framework. What it is, is actually, it's, it's been around for a long time and many of you might even recognize it because we've always had to do SPF, right? SPF says, hey, I'm gonna create a list for my email server. Well, let me, let me say it a different way. I'm gonna create a list of the email servers that are allowed to transmit on my behalf. So for example, if I've got viato.com as my domain, this server is going to have an IP address. Let's just say 5.9.6.22. I'm just making that up. If anybody owns that IP address, that's not meant to intrude on your ground, right? But it'll have an IP address. And I can go create a record it's called an SPF record in the DNS settings for Viato and say that IP address 
or I could even list it by name. Let's just say it's, uh, you know, uh, Jack. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, .microsoft365.com, which is where uh, viado.com is hosted, right? I, I could say that name, uh, server name or IP address is allowed to transmit email. And I can create a list of all the servers. So if this is constant contact or, uh, uh, why I, I keep thinking survey monkey, MailChimp, there's, there's a monkey somewhere. There's a monkey somewhere sending emails. Um, but, but if it's whatever servers I wanna do, I can list them by IP address in the SPF record, and that is one way that I can say these are authorized to send on my behalf. The challenge with SPF is it's a fairly weak way of listing the servers because hardly anybody, I'm not gonna, if you're one of them, that's it's no, no harm, but hardly anybody runs their own email servers anymore, right? It's so much more efficient to just pay Microsoft or Google to, to run it all for you, keep it stable, reliable, consistent, right? All, all of that, it's kind of like outsourcing your email server. Well, how many email servers does Google have or Microsoft? Thousands and thousands of them. Matter of fact, if you look at the SPF record that Microsoft or Google asks you to add, it, it opens the door to like 500,000 IP addresses to send on your behalf, right? So it's, it's kind of like SPF is good, but it's, it's kind of a blanket, right? There's a lot out there. That, that's in there. It's also somewhat limited, and I'm not gonna dive too deep into this, but the, how many servers you can list in here has a limit. You might hear 10 as a limit. There's more to that story, but I'll explain that in another video. DKIM is the second piece that can authorize your email servers. This one is actually better than SPF. Now, you can do both. I'm gonna, I, I, that's my mental note. Come back to that, Jeremy. Um, but in DKIM, what you do is you go to the servers that are sending on your behalf. So let's just say this is a constant contact server. And you say, I wanna set, sign up or, or enable DKIM on my account. And what they'll do is they will then say, okay, we'll tell you what, we will generate a cryptographic key. It's actually known as PKI keys, public key infrastructure, public private key. It's pretty much how all the security on the internet works nowadays um, is, is through the public key infrastructure, right? But they're gonna generate a public and private key and give you the information to, to put the, the key in your DNS. So the, the, the short version, again, this is, this is the sneak peek of how it works. I'll explain in depth even cryptography later on in this series of videos. But in, in PKI, what happens is they say, okay, I'm gonna give you a decryption key to put in DNS, and I'm gonna keep the encryption key myself. Now, every email that I send on your behalf, I'm gonna put a little signature on it. I kind of call it like a, a wax seal. That's my little red blob right there. It's like a wax seal on that envelope. And it says, I've got this secret encryption key that you're validating is good by putting the decryption key in your DNS settings. Now, whenever somebody receives an email from my domain, uh, from let's just say Constant Contact or something like that, or, or, or MailChimp, right? They're gonna look, they're gonna see that little encrypt, that, that, that little signature on there. They're gonna check my DNS and make sure that key unlocks it. And if it does, that server then goes, yep, you're good, you're a validated server. And that's considered a very strong way of validating the servers. SPF, kind of weak. DKIM, kind of strong, because you can see there's a lot more to it than just making a list of servers. Now, my, I, even in explaining that, my head was like, like, there's a lot that I'm not saying when I'm explaining how the encryption works. And like I said, it's a, it's a good 10 minute discussion, so I'm gonna save that for later. But the thing I wanna come back to is that mental note I, I mentioned before. Do I have to have SPF DKIM, or do I have to have both? The answer is it's always best to have both, but you only have to have one to be DMARC compliant. What I mean by that is if you can have SPF and DKIM for every email, like you've listed the email server and uh, uh, you, you, you've put the signature on there, great. Your email reputation sending from there is gonna go up even more, right? Um, but there are some services that only support one. Like for example, uh, Constant Contact does not support SPF. Why? Oh man, so much to explain to you in this one little video. 
Because when the new DMARC compliance standards came out, February 2024, thanks Google for setting that date uh, for everybody. Um, when those came out, they said, no longer are we going to have uh, impersonation being allowed. So, so in, in the old days, you could have SPF and Constant Contact could impersonate as though their server was you, right? They're saying that's not allowed anymore. The email fields have to match. The from address, the email you're sending from, has to match the actual server, like on the server has to say, yes, I'm authorized for that domain. And, and people like Constant Contact, they said, we can't do that. We'd have to re-architect all of our servers to be able to support that. So they've said in the new DMARC standards, we can no longer support SPF, but that's okay because we support DKIM. So now let me talk last thing, two last things about email reputation and DMARC equals reject. I mentioned early on when I was, I was showing you this little image, I was saying DMARC helps with phishing and it helps with spam. Helps with phishing because once you deploy DMARC, literally no one can send from your domain. And I'm gonna talk about that more when I talk about this, this reject flag. But two, it helps with spam because you are increasing the email reputation of any server that you authorize to send using these DMARC components, SPF and DKIM, right? Now, does that mean that you can just start blasting emails and it's not gonna go to spam? No, it does not. I mean, if you're sending spam, eventually you're gonna be flagged as spam and things like that and your email reputation goes down. But DMARC is one of the strongest ways you can increase your email reputation. And that's, that's, oh man, that's the number one. I, I should have started this video with that. That's the number one complaint that we've been getting. Uh, we being my MSP, Via, uh, our customers are like, hey, our customers are saying they're not getting our emails anymore. We're like, what? We dive in, we find out they're all going to spam now. Why? Because they're not DMARC compliant. And even though Google and Yahoo and everybody said, ah, it's gonna be a slow trickle over time, it's not. They are already increasing their email strictness policies, whatever, you know, all the factors that go in to determine whether something is junk or not. And they're saying those that have DMARC deployed correctly are going to get a much better email reputation than those that don't. And we've seen it. We've literally seen as we've enabled DMARC for some of these, 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 uh, I'm, I'm pointing at it, right? Some of these constant contacts and it, like, like the, the emails stop going to the junk email flow. It's, it's, it's a huge weight in there, okay? Um, okay, so last thing, DMARC equals reject. What is that? So I said, what is DMARC? It's three things. It's SPF, it's DCAM, and it's a flag. So DMARC is literally a configuration as well. You can go into the DNS settings once you've set all this up and you can say, I will now reject. And, I'm, and I, I, I tell the email servers of the world, and this, this is crazy. It is literally crazy. You control the email servers of the world for your own domain when you do this. I will tell the email servers of the world, reject anything that is not DMARC compliant. I compare that, this is this is my Lord of the Rings wizard. Everybody ever seen Lord of the Rings? Or, I, I can't even remember the part. I just remember him, the old guy with his staff where he slams it on the floor, some special effect magic things explode and things like, and he goes, you shall not pass. And a very dramatic music, Frodo the Ring. It's, it's, it's a moment, right? And that's what you deploy when you enable DMARC equals reject. You, it's a DNS setting. And what it does is tell every email server of the world, if there is any email that is not DMARC compliant, that is, it does not have SPM, uh, SPF or DKIM, one or the other, right, enabled, immediately reject the email. That puts a stop to all phishing. <laughs> Jeremy, hold your tongue. All phishing from my domain. Right? It doesn't stop the kind of phishing where people are, you know, they're sending from like Bob5963J at gmail.com and being there like, oh, I'm the CEO of Cisco, right? Like, like, like that will still always happen because those are legitimate emails. They're just coming from a bogus email addresses and they just change the first and last name to, to look. So, so that's, that's always good. But they, once you enable DMARC equals reject, it is impossible impossible for somebody to send from your domain anymore and impersonate you unless they have one of those two flags enabled. That is what DMARC is. It actually is really exciting because it's going to increase 
the reputation globally of email. Email, in Jeremy's opinion, is fading because no one can really tell if it's genuine. It's just flooded with all kinds of junk and it's just like, I, can't, I don't even know if that's real. And so that's, that's going down. I have a feeling as DMARC takes over the world, which thanks Google, because they're the only ones that have actually published like, here's what we're gonna do and here's the dates we're gonna do it, right? As, as they've, they've started enforcing these standards, the reputation of email will start to increase again and I think we'll start seeing a whole lot less junk. That is what DMARC is all about. If this has been informative for you, I'd like to thank you for being here.